Time to push performance. JT, something. why are you wrestling those papers so hard? Man, I got We're trying to start a podcast. I got notes and notes and notes, man. Trust me. She just said, time to start the show, and you were just. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked my mic out. Whoops. Yeah. No, let's do that again. Shit. I forgot about the IG questions. <laughs> oh. the unders- unders- what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> now I can't even. I'm underslept. That's 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 why. We got all this on recording. Mm. Welcome back. Pushing performance. Super excited for this episode. We uh went a little bit of a different route this way try to have some fun with a different topic taking outside the box for us a little bit and did a little bit of exercise ranking so jt what do we got on the menu today yeah i'm excited for everybody to listen uh we're gonna go over our top three overrated exercises or overhyped exercises that are used in the industry and uh followed by the top three underrated exercises or slept on so don't sleep on those don't exercises. sleep exercises okay so and uh no after that we we go over um all the some some of the questions uh, that were posted on ig so a lot of listener questions we'll have a better name for it igqs come to mind i don't know if you have a fun name that's, for, for that's questions. better than anything i got all right we got our igq at the end <laughs> um for just answering some questions that were asked um on the ig sweet no, super excited for this one. I think y'all are going to have hopefully half as much fun as we had making it. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's do it. JT, <laughs> how's it going, bro? Man, I am hyped. Oh, okay. In I like the calmest that. way possible now. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know, like... I've seen you hype, but even your hype compared to a lot of people is still pretty calm. <laughs> still pretty laid back. You're not, you're not going too, too crazy. And I love that about you. Got to keep it leveled out, you know? <laughs> Got to stay level with it. But no, I'm with you. I'm hype. I'm going to try to stay close to my microphone because I'm bouncing around. I'm fired okay. up. Uh, we, got a fun, we got a fun conversation. Interesting topic. Uh, getting into... Some of the most overused, overhyped movements that coaches use, and some of the most slept on movements that we think coaches can probably sleep. use a little bit more. If, if we ever have, like, this is probably the fifth or sixth motto of our show don't sleep is don't probably, sleep. but also, like, focus on your sleep. <laughs> like, sleep get, get your eight, but yeah, metaphorically, yeah. don't sleep, please. Don't sleep. Don't, don't sleep though. But uh, JT, I don't, I don't know if it was you. I don't know if it was me, but I'm gonna throw it on you um, for 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 this topic, as as I tend to do. But uh, why why dive into this one today on the show? That's a great question, Coach. I don't even know. I think the the main premise of it is really uh, understanding intent. Like mm. I think when I, when we see all these exercises. When we learn exercises, we start to do them. I start to do them. And I do them because that's what was on a piece of paper. And I was like on this course that I learned. And then I think yeah. I start to just do it and do it and do it. And then at some point, it becomes overrated or overused in that sense. And now it's like, okay, why am I even doing this? Or why is this coach even doing that? Right. So I think that the, the thought of looking at your exercise selection, yeah. What what are you currently doing in your programming? What's what may be overrated, what may be underrated, right? And yeah. I think every coach can look at their own stuff that they're doing and uh, you can probably, you know, create a list for each of those. I know I have. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love that. And yeah, thinking about <clears throat> rationale. <laughs> right? Like why is that in the program? And also like for me, it, it's like not getting swept up in the wave of 
social media and like obviously since we've started the show i've been on social media more than i've ever been on social media like posting more <laughs> posting way more often engaging with people uh way more often following more people um and it's easy to get kind of caught in your personal echo chamber like oh shoot everyone's doing this movement like i guess i have to too or like am i an idiot for not doing this movement or mm-hmm. or the flip side of that which is like man i'm this is this movement shows up in my primary block for all my strength clients like but no one else seems to be doing it. Like, why is no one doing it? Mm-hmm. And, and being comfortable with like, hey, like you have your rationale for your members or for your clients that you work with. Like, and if it makes sense, then let's keep rolling with it. Not saying, you know, not saying you shouldn't look for, you know, you shouldn't look for reasons to change it, right? Or things you could do better because we can always mm-hmm. probably try to do a little bit better. But, you know, it's not, it's not getting swept up in the echo chamber, uh, and feeling like less than or feeling incompetent as a coach. Yeah, for sure. I like that that answer. I think um, to add on to that, now that I'm thinking about it, it's it goes in line with our goal of the show, right? It's it's simplifying concepts, mm-hmm. complex concepts, right? And when I think of goals of of, of us or clients, a lot of people have goals of wanting to lose body fat or improving their body composition right yeah and exercise is not their goal it's a way to reach their goal but it's not the goal which i think we as coaches tend to lean on like we should do these exercises like yes but it, is that the, their goal is it their goal is to improve body composition not to get that specific exercise i yeah. think uh, and we'll expand a little bit more on on that so yeah 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 for sure. Yeah, I think before we get into it, just a little, just a little, uh, not even ground rules, like just a little qualifier, just a little asterisk before we go into our answers. Like, yes, we will provide context for all the answers that we give. But if we pick an exercise that is your favorite exercise, we want you to know that you're a bad coach. That's <laughs> on you. You shouldn't be doing that shit. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. Uh, if we pick an exercise that is your favorite exercise, this is not a personal attack. We always want the smoke. That's probably the the other motto or other other subtitle of the show. We always want the smoke. We always want to have a conversation. But this is not a personal attack. <laughs> this is not an attack on you. This is not an attack on your coaching. This is not an attack on your programming. Uh, this is just our personal opinion. And uh, sometimes JT and I are wrong about stuff. A lot of times, I'm, I'm definitely wrong. Uh, but I think my asterisk is is anecdotal experience, um, which tends to kind of lead me in the more right direction. But I'm usually wrong in there too. So I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So start with the negative. We'll finish with the positive. Not even a negative. We'll start with love that the most overhyped overused overrated exercises so for all of these we're each going to give three going from our third most to our most overhyped then we'll go from our third most to our most underrated or or most slept on so jt your third most overhyped exercise talk to me third most overhyped exercise is hit the drum roll Mm, box jumps Whoa, whoa. We have just uh, before we get into this, uh, J- JT and I have not shared our list with each other. Yes, so these are... when I scream after every one of JT's <laughs> answers, that is a real scream. Yes. That is real excitement. Okay, box jumps. Give it to me. We, don't, we do not know each other's answers. So this, is, uh, this is more for us, actually, uh, than whoever's listening. <laughs> Literally. Um, box jumps. Okay, talk to me. Damn, this would be a good time to screen share right now. But. Um, those who don't know box jumps are, you jump on a box in, in the gym. So that's, that's the exercise. And, uh, I think to give more context, you know, mm-hmm. I, I have a class that I teach. I have clients who want to improve their vertical jump, right? So mm-hmm. I have exposure in, in understanding how to improve somebody's um, qualities to achieve a greater jump height. Right. So it's more context. Like I know a lot about what I don't know, I guess, uh, if that makes sense. So box jumps is an overhyped exercise. Dang. A little bit more context there is, is personally I've used 
the box jump in a way that it was not intended to be used for. So I think understanding that box jumps, um, it helps reduce the amount of eccentric force on your lower body, right? To teach uh, somebody how to jump. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Somebody can jump and they can learn how to concentrically, <clears throat> you know, produce force and reduce the eccentric force of that. That's safe. It's nice. But I think mm -hmm. it, the reason I say it's overused is because it tends to be programmed in a way that it's not intended for that. Like it might have been like, okay, the knees will be safer, but no, let's do it for time. Let's let's go as high as you can, yeah, uh, because it's it'll achieve a, a greater jump height, or it, it's a, it's a high box, and I'm getting a high jump. You know, I think yeah. I think just the thought of of what it is it's not really what it should be and i think that's why i'm, I'm saying it's uh, overused okay okay I, I like that i like i'm with it i feel it yeah i've never been a fan of the super high box jumps i think people make a great case for it like for driving intent for immediate feedback i just like risk reward i've never been a huge fan of it always think it's kind of silly um that's shame because i'm good at it because my hips are wonderfully mobile but yeah it just doesn't uh i've, I've never been a huge fan but yeah <laughs> Thinking about that makes me think about one of my one of my managers back in North Carolina back in the day. I I would just get stuck on box jumps, like we would just do non counter movement box jumps. Then we would do counter movement box jumps. Then we do double contact, and we'd just be stuck on jumping on a box. And one day, my manager came by training. He's like, "Y'all been doing box jumps for three months. Like these are volleyball players. Like they jump all the time in training. Like you got to move on, man." And I was like, "Yeah, you're <laughs> probably you're probably right." So yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, um, there's a lot of reasons to do them. And there's, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of reasons to not do them. I think as a coach, we just have to understand what's the risk um, to reward, right? And learning how to jump is very valuable no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. um, literally, no matter who you are. Uh, mm -hmm. So understanding how to control your body in air is, is super valuable. Uh, but sometimes box jumps are not the move. You know, it's it's... Unless your goal is to jump on a box, like I, that's like the biggest reason to do it. Like if you want to jump <laughs> yeah. on a box, that's the, then, then you should be doing it. Probably I do it. All right. <laughs> What's yours? Let's, All let's, right, here let's we go. Um, I hope this isn't on your your slept on list, but I'm going number three. Overhyped, overused. Uh, this is coming straight from my own Instagram echo chamber, but I'm going with Zercher anything. <clears throat> okay is that on your that's definitely on your other list no it's actually it's actually not it's not <laughs> the it's... way you responded <laughs> i'm going search for anything um i feel like it's just not worth it for okay. much so i mean first and foremost it's just mad uncomfortable i know i'm sensitive emotionally i'm sensitive like physically like when i hook grip my thumbs hurt you know what I'm saying? It's like sometimes, like I just, you know, some the, the bar is too knurled. I'm clean and jerking, and they have like the Olympic bar rubbing up against you. I hate that. You know, I'm sensitive in the gym. So like doing Zercher stuff, elbows, it's just screaming, feels gar like garbage. Even with a little pad, or, or it just doesn't feel great uh, position wise. But I feel like it's just it's just okay at training a bunch of different qualities, right? So if I want to use it to reinforce position, uh, whether that's upright torso. If I want to use it as a, we could just call it like a general core stability piece. Like if I want to, you know, quote unquote, recruit my anterior core more or force myself to use my traps and lats more like to stay upright in the squat. Like, I feel like there's just, just do a goblet squat or, or just do a kettlebell rack squat. Like there's, there's other better ways to do that. Um, I've seen some decent arguments for like, it's like how you pick stuff up in real life and like sort of, but also no, like if you want to pick stuff up, just like, I don't know, pick stuff up, like get a stone, <laughs> pick it up, get a, a heavy D ball, pick it up. Like just pick real shit up. Like don't, don't do something in the gym. Um, so yeah, search or anything. I would mm -hmm. see a lot of like, and again, my own echo chamber. Again, it's not a bad exercise, but you know, search or, search or squats, search or lunges or just split squats, whatever. Like, I just feel like, it's not really doing not not super necessary. Okay. So that's my number that's my number three. 
Hating on the Zerch. All right. Hating. I, I, was, I went full hater. Hating on Zerch. Okay, I'm with it. I mean, I've done them. I hated them. Now you're just giving me reaffir- <laughs> reaff- you're affirming me why I, I didn't really need to do them, but uh, I like doing them. I like doing them. I like it though. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, what's that? What's that number two? Number two. It's gonna be a slash because um, it's, it's, it's similar movements. I'm gonna say Renegade Rose. Oh yeah, Renegade Rose, and th- this one, this next one, I'm gonna put. It's gonna be in the same answer. I get a lot more hate. It's push-ups. Oh my god, push-ups and Renegade Rose are overrated. <laughs> push-ups, al- push-ups almost made my push-ups almost made my slept on <laughs> list. <laughs> Push-ups oh, and Renegade shit. Rose are overrated. Okay. Talk to Let me. Let me explain. Your wrists. Mm. How many times have you, your clients, your athletes have ever complained about the wrists? I mean, I literally just said I'm sensitive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah. putting all that weight, whatever weight you have on your wrists, on dumbbells, to do a row, we're going. We're almost going seedman on it. <laughs> Danger zone. To do a row um, and a push up in one motion, like mm. just do a chest support row or do a bench, dumbbell bench, and not mess with the wrist. You're still getting the same thing, right? The adaptation is to do a press, to do a mm. a pull, to to maintain core stability, right? And you can make the argument of, oh, you're doing that all in one. Maybe. Yeah. But there's this, there's this uh, quote, I forgot uh, who said it, but if you chase two chickens, you'll get none. Mm. Right? Rocky Balboa. So, is it Rocky? Yeah, it was Rocky Balboa. Okay. Rocky Balboa. Philadelphia legend. Shout out Philly. <laughs> uh, so, like, there's all these exercises where you, you're combining things and you, yeah, you're probably getting a little bit of some things, but I, there's more effective ways to achieve the stimulus that you're trying to achieve, and which in this case, a renegade row, do some rows, you know, do a dumbbell bench, mm-hmm. do a, um, a, a walking march with, with weight. Because risk, if that's going to be your limiting factor, is it really worth it? I personally don't think so. Um, yeah. Same with push-ups. That's that's really the the goal there, or that's really the intent of me saying push-ups is the same thing, putting yeah the weight on your wrist. wrist. And, and push-ups. Yeah. I'm gonna go on tangents, but go ahead. No, go go. Nah. Are you sure? Are you, sure you better go off. Stop me now, bro. Oh my god, I was just thinking. Yeah, like I I almost put handstands on the mm. slept on list because I mean I just love. I love like, you know, we call it for, for lack of a better term, like quote unquote gymnastics. Sure. Um, but the reason I didn't was because of the wrist. Mm-hmm. It's like thinking about the stress on the wrist. Like, and again, like I think people should be able to make that shape under load, but just because people should be able to do it doesn't mean that a lot of people can do it. Right. And I think like progressing towards being able to do that is great. But we, uh, and you've said this on a, on a couple different episodes, like challenging my thought process when I'm talking about simple versus complex, I typically would say a push up is simple, right? But if you're working with a new member who's in the general population, maybe they probably work behind a desk, right? They're probably not moving much. They probably haven't moved or loaded their wrists like that in a long time. Mm-hmm. That might not be as simple of an exercise if they yeah. can't even be in that position under load. And like, especially working with clientele who's like pretty desk bound that can be a really tough position under load that, yeah, like week one, they might not say much, but then, you know, five, six, seven weeks on the road, you know, they have their wrists are in the like excruciating pain, just, just getting all up and down off the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't even that, thought about the wrists. I think understanding what simple and common mm. means, those are mm-hmm. two very, very different, um, definitions of especially when you're talking to, about exercise right yeah a push-up is is common mm. it can look simple but it, it's very complex in the sense of there's certain uh you know mechanical prerequisite you should have to do it effectively yeah. right wrist being one of them so yeah um you can stop yeah. me there the rest the army or military is going to get at me with saying 
Don't literally do push-ups. The, no, I just got a text from the, the United States Armed <laughs> Forces, and they are on the way to the crib. They're shutting down the show. <laughs> yeah, no, they're on the way, bro. Just stay where you are. Just stay oh, where you boy. are. Please go. Please go peacefully. It was about to happen at some point, bro. But another asterisk, like, people should be able to do push-ups. People should be able to do a box jump. I mean, like, you should have confidence in doing them, but that's not something that you should be programming as a way to achieve a stimulus. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Damn. Well, to, in a similar vein, in asking for the smoke, should I make it fired for this? Uh, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go planks. Planks. Uh, I'm going planks, bro. I'm talking, okay. I'm talking. 2008 viral challenge planking now i'm talking i'm talking elbow planks uh and the reason behind it is i feel and this is from personal experience and experience of of, of like looking at at coaches programs that i've worked with uh it's one of those exercises that is just like gets thrown into the program as like again that general kind of quote-unquote core stability piece uh and it's like what are we even really trying to do you know stabilize the core what does that mean? I don't know, but this is going to do it. So I'm just going to plank and then I'm just going to plank a little bit longer. And then I'm going to plank a little bit longer and then maybe I'll throw some weight on your back or like well, maybe you'll plank on a, on a BOSU ball, like whatever. And like, again, it's not a bad exercise. It's not going to hurt anybody, but like, why am I doing it? Right. If I'm trying to train my torso to resist external forces, better ways. Right. I can do different like anti rotation press variations, I can do different chop and lift variations. Uh, if I'm trying to train my ability to maintain uh, my rib cage stacked over my pelvis and like both in a relatively neutral position, again, like this, that's so non-specific to when I would need to do that, right? Like if I, if I want to be able to do that, I probably want to be able to do that like while playing sport or throughout my like moving throughout my life. So I'm going to do maybe at the lowest level, something like a dead bug. Right, where now I have to maintain, you know, my pelvis and my rib cage position, but I'm also moving my limbs. So and then move into carries and then move into like some other things where it's now more specific to locomotion. It's more specific to a pattern that you would see uh throughout life, throughout sport, whatever it is. So I think planks are one that people just kind of lean on to. It's like a fun challenge. I mean shit, we've done plank challenges at <laughs> events that we run, right? And I didn't even think about that till right now. But like it's one of those <laughs> things where I think it's just like It is an overrated exercise that, again, like the push-up, it's common. So it's like, I probably should do this, I guess. And it finds its way into programs and just kind of lives in programs. And it's like, is there a better use of our time than just planking? Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. I like it. That's that's my... That is my... All right. I was thinking about all the places I planked in 2020. Is this 2020? (laughs) That challenge. Top of, the fr- top of the fridge at the park. On Starbucks. A McDonald's sign. <laughs> on the just planking on the golden arches. That was one of my favorite challenges, I think. That was a good that was a good we we gotta bring back more wholesome challenges like the plank challenge. It was fun. Like it was it was funny. Yeah. Just that was somebody good. laying down splooting on the floor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, all, all right. right so give me that planks. number one though. that's that's uh that's fair so number one i think this is a an easy one not an easy one this is an answer that a lot of podcasts probably gave i think back squats are overrated mm, i knew barbell back squats i knew i knew it was gonna come up <laughs> eventually <laughs> so it had to be here barbell back squats are overrated for a general population. That's a that's a sentence. That's a sentence for a general population. <laughs> for a general population. Wait, for can you break population. down? Can you break down gem pop real quick? I don't know. We've we've thrown that word around a lot. Yeah. And I don't know if we've ever actually described it on that's, the show. That's, that's that a good means. point. So general population, I think a definition there is 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 non not an athlete if, if they're not training um, to for sport. Right, if they're Meaning not like they're not getting paid to play their sport, they're not getting paid to play the sport. They might play sports. Uh, I yes. think that's, that's fair to call out. So, um, yeah, I think just distinguishing athletes um, who that's that's their full time job is to be an athlete versus a gen, 
general population individual that's not their full-time job and that could look like <clears throat> desk jobs that could look like um anything but that what, what would you uh, expand with there yeah i i think what the what the military might call a civilian mm. which just kind of sounds call somebody a civilian kind of sounds rude <laughs> But yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I, that the, the biggest qualifier for me is like you're not getting paid to play a sport. Mm. So like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take different risks. I'm gonna uh, approach yeah. training and programming a little bit differently. If you're getting paid to play a sport, I'm gonna talk to you differently. If you're getting paid to play a sport, versus if you are just an adult, high school athlete, whatever, and you play a sport. Mm -hmm. And I think we both work with a, a fair amount of people who we put in the general population who love to play sports and we yeah. train them like athletes, but it's still for me, like it's different than how I would work with an MLB guy. It's different mm -hmm. than how I'd work with an NFL guy because knowing like they, this is, this is what you get paid to do. Like, this is your job. This is your livelihood. It's different. Okay. Right. So that, that's kind of how I differentiate the two. Okay. Well, either way. If you're gen pop or an athlete, I think back squats are still overrated. <laughs> All right. Why, why, uh, why are back squats um, overrated? Obviously, if you're a powerlifter, if you compete in powerlifting, you probably have a bar on your back at some point. Um, however, if you are a, a civilian, in this case, um, if a barbell back squat lives in your program for the intent of improving lower body strength, mm. uh, there's better ways to do it. Uh, instead of loading a crazy amount on your back and that's just causing, uh, you know, we don't, it's an unnecessary axial loading. You don't need that spine to have that much weight to achieve the stimulus of lower body um, strength. Uh, I think okay. the risk versus the reward there is, doesn't make sense to do it. However, I think it's useful for somebody to be able to do it. Yeah. Like, it, you know, if, give them confidence, put a bar on their back, do back squat. You know, I think the, having the ability to do a barbell back squat sh is something that we can think about as coaches, but it, it should not live in there. And I think that's why I'm saying it's overrated because I think as coaches, we tend to just keep it there. And that's like the goal now when initially the goal they came in with, like, I am trying to lose weight, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you got me with these knee sleeves on. You got my thick robe, leather belt on. Yeah, no, that that actually did, did, was a, basically exactly what I what I was gonna say is like, too many times it becomes the end itself and not the means. Like just like you teed up this conversation with, right? Like too many times back squat becomes the goal, or for whatever reason, back squat becomes like the exercise that we're progressing to, right? And like. To a certain point, like, I don't give a shit that some old, dead Russian guy loved back squats. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't not, that doesn't matter to me. Like, Why what, what he's is dead, bro? Oh, yeah, but well, he might that be. <laughs> Berkashansky's dead. His daughter's alive, though. She's, a, she's brilliant. But <laughs> Berkashansky's dead. I'm sorry, bro. R.I.P. R.I.P. King. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> still, he lost a train of thought. <laughs> but, um, like, we can, like you said, we can do, we can achieve the stimulus you want in other ways. Like, especially if the goal is weight loss. Like, yeah, I think again, like you said, people should have the ability to perform a barbell back squat. Like you should have the ability to move in that way. But like, if I can load up something different, if I can load up a lunging pattern, if I can load up a split squat pattern, if I can, you know, just load, load up, a, maybe even a trap bar deadlift, like load you up in a different pattern that achieves the goal we want. That's a, a, a I don't even, I don't even want to say safer, but that's just like a little bit easier mm -hmm. to do than like, I'm, probably i'm probably gonna choose that right and that actually yeah. transitions beautifully into my number one which is we're gonna seem like just lame barbell haters the powerlifting community is going to come for us uh and i'm sorry powerlifting community again this is personal but i'm going uh barbell <laughs> bench press as my number oh. one overhyped exercise mondays uh, everybody that works out on monday is now coming for you bro they're gonna be like they're gonna like listen to the episode on Friday and be in the gym Monday conflicted, <laughs> conflicted dog. Yeah, bar barbell benches for the same reason. Like uh, it becomes the end. It becomes the thing that we progress to, right? When we think about, you know, and yeah, it's probably the it is the horizontal pushing pattern we can overload the most. 
right? Like from a stability standpoint, I'm the most stable. I'm lying on a bench with a fixed object. I can push the most weight with this exercise. But I think like, again, specifically general population, even athletes, like even thinking about myself, like I've stopped barbell bench pressing because I really enjoy playing tennis, right? And I play a ton of tennis now. Uh, and that gives me a lot of, uh, energy and engagement to keep training gives me something to train for and, and it's some sort of movement and play that i that i very much enjoy just generally in my life now and uh but i was realizing that you know kind of square peg round hole as one of my primary upper body strength movements even low volume barbell bench pressing I, my shoulders just especially my, my my right shoulder the shoulder i serve with just kind of felt like shit my wrist didn't feel great um and then switching it to dumbbell tended to, to clean up a lot of those things Right, allow me to feel a little better. So just even just like again, just because everyone should be able to do it doesn't mean everyone can do it. Um, you know, forcing people into that fixed position like doesn't always end great. And if I can, if I can bench, move a little bit more comfortably with a dumbbell, and yeah, I'm leaving some strength on the table. But my goal isn't hmm. barbell bench press, right? My yeah. goal is having a strong enough upper body to serve a tennis ball fast and live the life that I want to live. Yeah. Right. So like that, and and I'm very easily achieve that with a dumbbell. Versus yeah. A, in this case, a barbell. That's fair. Okay. I like that. I think it's it's a good call out just to really get us understanding to or get us to understand how to look at exercise as a a means to a goal. Right. And again, just referring to um, the gen pop, general pop, civilians. We might have a goal to get better at bench press. Now, if that's the case, then you put bench press into your routine. But if the goal is, uh, you know, body composition to to be healthy, to play tennis, to that should not live in that program forever. Knowing that that's not their goal specifically. There's ways to achieve, um, you know, an upper body pushing type of pattern um, that has a lower risk, right? So. That's fair. I think we, we're we're on top there. I'm surprised we didn't have yeah. the same answers. Okay. This is good. This is like okay. It. We're rolling. We're rolling. I All like right. It. Let's switch gears. Get on the positivity train. We like to be positive at pushing performance. Sometimes. Uh, we, <laughs> we like to show love. So let's switch it up. Let's go. Our slept on exercises. So our top three most slept on hmm. exercises. JT, what's your number three? Number three, slept on, underrated, underutilized, whatever you want to call it. I'm going with band-assisted jumps. Whoa. Yeah. So it ties in well with, with my, my box jumps comment, right? I think okay. understanding that people should learn how to jump, you know, the mm -hmm. mechanics of it, and, and understanding how to produce force um, at a higher rate, you know, all those things, no matter who you are, there's, there's a lot of value to that. And as mm -hmm. a coach, there's a lot of value to to correlating that to somebody's life, right? Yeah. So assisted banded jumps. And I want a couple trampoline jumping onto that. I think that's a another oh. way to to achieve that goal. Right. So if we're talking about jumping, producing force at high rate, mm -hmm. um, I think band assisted jumps can give you the ability to jump to produce concentrically and also it deloads uh, that eccentric force I refer to with with to your patella specifically right and mm -hmm. you know there's still some there's a learning curve to that but it's it's fun for some for one for one thing and if you you're not going to clip your feet on a you know in the air and if you do yeah. that's a different conversation so it's it's a little safer in that sense you're 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 jumping and you're still achieving that uh, similar goal so Man, band assisted jumps. Okay. I like I like that rationale a lot, right? Like so like what is the easiest way to jump higher? Or the most effective way to jump higher? Way less. <laughs> right? If I can if I can produce the same amount of force in the same amount of time, but the object I'm projecting, i.e. my body weight, is less, well more force, less load, it's gonna go higher. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing with pull ups. Probably easier for people to conceptualize. Like, what's the easiest way to get better at pull ups? Be lighter. Right. So, like, that's why people do banded pull ups. But, like, I think people mm -hmm. think about banded jumping like uh, French contrast. So, I'm doing like band accelerated jumps to eat, to speed up the rate of contraction even higher. When in reality, I can use band assisted jumps almost as like a teaching tool, like mm -hmm. you just said. Yep. And 
I can still land on the ground, but take some of the eccentric load out of the equation. Just a little bit. So Yep. <sighs> you preaching with a bandit jump. Okay. I hope I get it. some feedback on there, some hate. I want I want to hear people's thoughts on that one a little bit. Uh what about you? What what do, what do you got for uh slept on? Underrated? I know I know I just gave so much flack to the bench press and the the powerlifting and the bodybuilding community, maybe thinking about me differently, but I think I'm about to win their hearts back with my number three most slept on exercise. And yeah, I'm going with my favorite exercise of all time. This is not a joke. This is not a bit. It's the machine chest fly. That's right. I'm I'm going peck deck for my number three, bro. I think my computer's freezing because I think I heard you say peck deck, bro. Peck deck, bro. Number three most left on. Listen, this is purely personal. <laughs> this is my personal vendetta. I I love the peck deck machine more than anything on this earth. I'll walk oh, that wow. back a little bit. I'll walk that back a little bit. But more than most things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like, I just feel like, I don't know why, but for me, nothing gives me just a gloriously juicy chest pump like the peck deck machine. Um, so I think it's fun. And I think mm-hmm. it's a, a, a interesting way to like load that end range position. It can be like really challenging, but also I can progress towards just like a dip or a push up. I can progress towards getting closer and closer and closer to the end range position. And I've also seen people um, sit uh, like on the machine, like with a foam roller on their back or like something in between them that allows them to move their shoulder blades around ah, the rib cage a little bit more when they're doing it, which is a variation that I do like a ton. But yeah, from a hypertrophy standpoint, um, and just from a fun standpoint, like just getting it juiced up with your dogs in the gym, uh, Peck Deck is just is just second to none for me. So I'm going Peck okay. Deck. Juice up the puppies with the Peck Deck. I love it. People sleep. Okay. I like that. I'm going to go on Peck Deck one, now. Huh? You were ready morning. for that one. I was not. I like it a lot, though. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, what do I got next? Number two? Give me that number two. Underutilized. Slept on. Underrated. Split squat anything. Okay. So variations of the split squat. Because I, I was going to, initially I was going to say isometrics, but I don't think that's an underutilized exercise. But yeah. I think if we were to go specifics, uh, isometric split squats. Okay. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk to me about the isometric um, split squat. It's just easy. Easy to load. Mm. Let, me, let me rewind. It's hard. It's, it's a very, very difficult exercise to do. Uh, but I think just going back to the back squat um, comment, uh, if we're trying to achieve lower body um, strength, you know, producing force, you can load your hands with some dumbbells uh, with mm-hmm. one leg and just do it now with the other leg. And now, boom, you, you've just achieved what you're trying to achieve. So I think just loading is, is safer. You're not putting anything on the spine specifically. And um, you're focusing on um, that unilateral deficiency, if anything, right? You, you, we all know one leg is probably weaker than the other. You're not balanced. Mm-hmm. So here's your chance to you know, focus on that a little bit. So a lot of, a lot of benefits, I think to do, um, split squats and there's ways to do it too. I've, I've been, um, keen. I've been using that word a lot. Keen. Uh, shout keen. out to, shout out to, uh, my people, um, uh, up in APAC. Um, the Smith machine rear foot elevated split squats have been my favorite as of late. Interesting. Yeah. Why, why Smith machine on that? Um, I could load and I don't have to force myself to stabilize um, with dumbbells. It's, 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 you know, I could just put so, my foot back and not have to play around, play hopscotch with that one foot. So like balance wise, it's easier. So when we're thinking like, I think it's Max Marzo always talks about the stability force production continuum. If I'm in a more stable position, I can produce more force versus if I'm in a less stable position, I can, I can't produce as much force. So like you're saying like, if I am balanced in the split squat or like in the in the Smith machine, sorry, then all I have to focus on is driving through the floor. Yeah, and producing force. Yeah, and at, 
I think it, it reduces my, my attention to like worry about balance yeah. or I don't have to worry about balance. I think that's another um, over hyped concept that I think coaches play around with is like, okay, I can do this exercise with also improving balance. Like yeah, nah. you're chasing two chickens again. So yeah. focus on one thing and I like to split squat anything. That's, that's my, uh, I like that slept on. I like that. Yeah. I think, I think one thing people sleep on with, with a, a split squat, um, is anytime you're in more of a split stance versus a bilateral stance. So like bilateral being your feet, you know, in line with one another and split being your feet apart in some way is it just allows, it allows a little more movement for our pelvis on top of our femur. Right. And knowing that again, like just because everyone should be able to be able to perform a back squat doesn't mean they can, if I can just allow for, for my pelvis to move over my femur, how it wants to, like maybe I lack internal rotation. So I, I might cheat it to get external rotation on the front leg or vice versa. Uh, maybe I feel better in internal rotation versus external rotation on the front leg. Again, just meaning that allowing that pelvis to move can allow me to organize the split squat how I want to. So I feel like at least anecdotally for me and, and for people I've worked with in the past, I feel like split squat feels more comfortable more often than not because there's more room for, for individual variability in that movement, mm -hmm. right? Whereas, you know, yes, in a back squat, you can hip shift and, and and flex and extend the spine and things like that but there's less boom for your pelvis to move again we're mm -hmm. in the split squat real foot elevator whatever i can move my pelvis a little bit more freely so like jt and i our hips might look in a slightly different position but feel just as comfortable for both of us both of us based on our unique anatomy based on the positions that we can comfortably get into so i feel mm -hmm. like that's one of the like one of the slept on reasons for leveraging a movement yeah. like a split squat or a step up or something like that yeah i like that yeah all right bet uh my number two what you got i'm going and this is this is a a slept on for practical reasons i think more than anything hmm. but i'm going now my favorite movement for performance so i want pec deck my favorite movement for hypertrophy uh, and yes i know it's probably not the best movement for stimulating pec hypertrophy but i don't care what the papers say I don't care. Um, now I'm going my favorite for, for, for just general performance, whether that's in life or in sport. Uh, but any rotational medicine ball toss variation is my number two. Any position, any rotational toss. Hey. So it can be parallel, looking at the wall. It can be perpendicular, facing the other direction from the wall. Any, any uh, rotational medicine ball toss. And, and for me, again, like I said at the top, it's probably practical. Like you might not have a wall to throw the ball into. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as someone who's thrown a, a medicine ball through drywall before in his life, I get it. Um, I'd rather have you not make that mistake that I made because you get in trouble for it. <laughs> you got to pay for it. But yeah, I, I think again, like, and we probably should have a full episode on, on this uh, as far as like training athletic qualities as we age. But when you look at the things that go away, right, as we get older, it, it's mostly, um, eccentric and concentric rate of force development, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's because of rate coding, whether it's purely neuromuscular, like whatever it is, whatever the rationale is, like we don't jump, sprint, change direction a lot as we get older. Mm -hmm. So then we lose that ability, right? And is that that's the same ability to jump, sprint, change direction, handle rotational forces that we need when we're playing with our kids, playing a pickup game of basketball, right? Running after our dog, jumping out of the way from something, catching ourselves when we fall, right? We need those same things. And I think for medicine ball, it's too easy for, for our general fitness clients who just want hypertrophy to get stuck in never rotating. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we're getting you to your goal, right? We're changing your body composition. And that's great. But you know, how can we sprinkle in some things that they need for life? Right. Mm -hmm. So giving you the ability to, to, to rotate, you know, not only with speed projecting another load, but also like technically well, but I can coordinate my body positions or my body segments well in that pattern. So yeah, for me, rotational, rotational medicine ball toss okay. variations, thousand percent slept on so people we're, we're sleep, sleeping on the throws, mm -hmm. the rotational work. I love it. Okay. I agree. I like that. Um, 
Why do you think we, we sleep on those? Well, for that one specifically. I, I, again, I think some of it's practical, but beyond like, so like not having access to a, a cement mm. wall or a cinder block wall, whatever to throw the ball into. I don't know. I, I feel like a, a, one aspect of it is they, they, people, we tend to put people into a box to a certain degree. Like, you know, Hey, mm. they're not an athlete. They don't need that. Mm. Like they just don't like, Hey, you know, they, their goal is general fitness. They don't need that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or their goal is to get stronger. They don't need that. Mm-hmm. Like when in, when in reality, I feel like it, it's, it's probably like the most, one of the most fluid and athletic movements that we can do in our training other yeah. than jumping. Mm-hmm. And even like sometimes like bilateral jumping doesn't look and feel that fluid and athletic, like back to box jumps, <laughs> but if like, like bounding, hopping, things like that, right. but like that, then we start to get more, you know, fluid, more athletic, yeah. more locomotive, but like I, medicine ball, again, being able to, to load one hip and then drive into the other, like fluidly, mm-hmm. there's something just so athletic in nature about it that mm-hmm. the people lose it yeah. in their, that the, the time and the sequence and they lose that in their lives and and so and i think sometimes clients think it's silly like i've ever been in situations where clients think it's kind of silly to do yeah um, but i don't know is there was did you have a specific thought in mind as, as far as like why well yeah because initially when i first started my career there like throwing a ball i i just thought oh that's for your core that's to increase your core strength and then yeah you know i found the planks and i started to do do those and i think the intent of of the rotational work um started to be a little bit more clear to me over time and just thinking about initially like i didn't know why i was doing that i thought it was just for you know improving your core stability again it's throwing that word out so i think just for me just thinking back that's probably why i slept on it before is like uh, i could do that core stability with russian twist i'm gonna sit on the floor and turn my to my shoulders left to right right yeah um okay let me get let me get that number one that numero uno most numero slept uno. on exercise it's not gonna be as exciting i wish i had a like a pick deck or, or something don't down da- don't downplay um, it jt don't downplay your <laughs> exercise it's plenty exciting for me all right i'm gonna go with incline dumbbell bench oh hmm Incline dumbbell bench is um, underutilized, slept on, underrated, whatever. Just crown hits it. your bone. Boom. Crown That's the, the one. incline dumbbell bench. That's the uh, one. Why? Why? Why did you end up going with that one? Number one. Number one. Um, a lot of reasons. One of them. It's it's easier to to unload. Like once you're in the air, once you have dumbbells in the air, you don't have to go very far to bring your knees back. Yeah. And rock forward, right? Um, as opposed to a flat bench, that's a long yeah. way to go. You're like, <laughs> long way to go. I'm gonna just drop them right here, and I'm sorry if your big toe is gone right there, sir. Yeah, um, look out below. I think just from a safety standpoint, you could easily just unload it uh, from a shorter distance from your fist to the knees. Um, secondly, I think it 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 gives us a better angle to do an upper pushing pattern um, mm. with knowing that. You know, a lot of clients' shoulders aren't really in the the best uh, prerequisite type of position to achieve uh, the optimal range. So, in other words, I think it's this puts mo- most people in a better position. Yeah. To push or to put weight over their head. Um, you know, I think being too upright in an overhead press, not enough shoulder mobility to really achieve that in, in a lot of cases. Um, same with even a flat bench, right? Mm. I think being at the bottom, you know, yeah, run into some internal yeah. rotation issues there. So I think being in the middle, um, at that inclined position is a nice sweet spot where as a coach, it, it gives us a little bit more variability to really work with, you know, improving that upper body pushing pattern. Okay. Damn. So what I'm hearing from JT there is if you do either dumbbell bench press flat or any overhead pressing, you're a bad coach. Like, and just, it's just a crazy stance. Stop doing it. Like, just, yeah. you're not. Doesn't make sense. What are you doing? Why? No. Why don't you know how to be a coach? Like, you know, uh, they haven't been no. listening to the show enough. Maybe this is their first <laughs> week. Maybe they're just learning. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. No, I love, I love that rationale. Again, like, 
putting people in a position to be successful. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm not saying those other exercises are bad, but like, let's not forget that there's somewhere in the middle that's pretty good <laughs> that we can live at for a little bit if we need to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the crown right there. Incline, wow. dumbbell, bench. What? What about a? Uh, we got two crowns, right? We got two. Okay. We got not two. the one, not the two, but the UNO for me. <laughs> Is it, I'm cheating. I'm cheating with this one. This one's a cheat. I even wrote in my notes, this is a cheat. I don't care. Um, <laughs> this is the first thing I wrote after I wrote this one down. But my number one most slept on exercise is play. And I know that's not to- quite an exercise, but I don't care. This is our podcast. We can literally do whatever we want. There's no <laughs> rules on this. We made this up. This is, this is our this is our list. I don't care what people say. Oh. My number one is play. Uh, and this is something that I, I kind of gave you a little, little Easter egg, a little breadcrumb when I was talking about the, the bench press. But like, as a mm. coach, per, again, speaking totally personally, for me, it's like, how can I just keep training, you know, forever? Like, what's going to keep me wanting to train? And when I was younger, I thought, like, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to stop loving this train and stuff. Like, I'm in the gym two hours a day. I would be in there three if I could. You know, there's no way I'm ever going to stop loving this. Like, I love this. This is my life. And then all, like, over time, you know, you get a little bit older, and I'm, like, 30 now, and I'm like, bro, I don't like this train and stuff. Like, how can I train for 45 minutes? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it, you start to not lose love for it, but it's like, there's more to life than just being in the gym. Uh, but play has been one thing that's consistently kept me training hard and kept me enjoying training. So right now for me, it looks like playing tennis. Um, for people I work with, it looks like playing games in our warm up or playing games in our conditioning, right? So doing things that allow people the time to, to have fun, to make decisions, to read and react and, and, and you know, just move and organize how their body's going to move and organize based on their environment, based on what they're seeing in front of them. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, it makes training so much more fun, so much more engaging, keeps people coming in and keeps people having fun. Like, I think we take this training shit like too seriously sometimes and take ourselves too seriously as coaches and not, not saying like, listen, I take what I do extremely seriously and I want to be the best coach I can be for the people that I work with and the coaches that I work with. But that doesn't mean we can't have fun too. Like that doesn't mean we can't enjoy our time. So for me, integrating play into some warm ups, integrating play into into things that we do, maybe a regen day even, like just integrating play into your training, I, I think has multiple benefits. And then not even talking about the cognitive benefits. Like benefits to creativity, mm-hmm. benefits to mental well being, benefits yeah. to general happiness. Right. Like right. there's those things as well. So for me, that's why I went with the cheat. I'm gonna throw the crown on play. Okay. I don't like it. It's overrated. <laughs> Playing's overrated. Uh, I no, don't play it, games. <laughs> we don't play no games here. I like that. I think that's a it's not a cheat. It's a, I think it's a good answer to to really close this uh topic out just because it's it's something that I think we should we as in human beings should understand how to do forever like how do we continue the 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 thought in ourselves of how to play how to yeah. enjoy life <laughs> right not to take this too philosophical but, I, but that, like, at the end of the day that's what we should be doing i always think i think back to uh my boy shane who i used to work with way way back in the day like 2016 2017 and he was big into movement culture and huge into play. And I was always, and at that time I was huge in the CrossFit, huge in the Olympic weightlifting, taking training way too seriously, taking myself way too seriously. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, you're always doing dumb stuff. Like, stop, stop telling him, trying to tell him what to do. And now I look back on it and I'm doing literally 100% of the things that he was telling me to do. <laughs> like, shout out Shane. Shout out Shane, bro. Uh, I think he's a realtor now. Shout out Shane. Um, but he was always like, bro, what do you like to do for play? And I was like, bro, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up, bro. But like, at the time, I was just like, just hitting CrossFit super hard and mm-hmm. trying to compete at a, at a relatively medium level in, in that, you know, quote unquote sport. Mm-hmm. But like, now looking back on it, it's like, yeah, if I would have integrated more play and, and fun into my training, I maybe I'd still be doing it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe, yeah. maybe I would have been able to do it longer or have more fun doing it. So like, right. Even doing, and then 
you know, even doing something like a spike ball in your warm up, like just some like something mm-hmm. that is going to 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 get you, you know, outside of the confines of your normal training program. Right. Okay, I like that. Shout out Shane. Shane's been real, bro. He's a realtor now, but he's been real. Um, I think, and I, I think with with on that note, like answers always in the middle, right? If 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 all of your yeah. training sessions look like it, you're just playing, and you're just yeah. doing games. No, you tra- take your training a little bit more serious. And on the yeah. other side of that, if your training is too serious, you know, integrate a little bit more play. So there's all the answer is always in the middle, but play i think is this something that we should always keep at the top of our mind to be young right let's be young up here in the the, the head and um enjoy i like that way to to close it out with very positive energy man that's what i'm I'm trying to keep it positive up in here man (laughs) change it it from pushing performance to pushing positivity push Ooh. okay i think we just came up idea the t-shirt idea right there (laughs) <laughs> uh all right but hey let's 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 switch gears a little bit take it to some listener questions we still need to find mm. a dope name for this section but right now it's just ig questions on on our on our list yeah uh listeners if you have a, a good name idea for the written in questions portion of the show that's mm-hmm. relatively rapid fire please let us know okay yeah please let us know i'm, I'm just thinking of a whole bunch of names right now like I saw this whole wheel turning. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. But our relatively rapid fire. Uh, you actually talk about staying young. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm just going to seamlessly transition this to, to one of our, our questions from Coach Will talking about longevity. So for mm-hmm. you, JT, what does longevity mean to you? It's a nice transition mm. from play to, to longevity. Smooth, bro. Um, shout smooth. out, Coach Will. Shout out, Coach Will. Um, shout out. Great question for a very young coach, by the way. I, I love that. Where is his, his thought is there, his mind. He's, so, he's already thinking. He's already thinking. Thinking ahead. I think longevity just means um, able, right? If I were to put some words into able, can, are you able to do X? Are you able to do Y? Are you able to play tennis? Are you able to swim? Are you able to walk up your third floor apartment? You know, those that kind of things. I think longevity will be defined a little bit differently as we um move forward in in life i think you should like you should understand what longevity means to you uh, Mm -hmm. think about it you know as we as we age so yeah i think now for me longevity is can i hoop can i jump a little higher than the people that i train can i can i hoop for longer you know can i chase my dog around Uh, so those kind of things uh, i think able ability to fill in the blank i like that yeah mm-hmm. mine's mine's pretty damn similar like uh, i'm just gonna sound super morbid but like we're we're not meant to live forever like just straight up like the only thing consistent about the human experience is that it ends like and that's the same for all biological organisms right so it's like I think lo- the longevity market isn't going anywhere when you think about like the trillions of dollars or trillion of dollars that is being spent in the the realm of of kind of general longevity, either products, services, actual healthcare, kind of like woo woo fake healthcare, like there's there's so much money being poured into longevity, um, and that's never going to stop. And so I think it's probably good to start to arm yourself with an understanding of, of just biology in general. And then the fact that things are going to change, but we can buffer some of that. Mm-hmm. So like we can buffer longevity or, or buffer, um, you know, breakdown in bone mineral density, breakdown in lean muscle tissue, breakdown from a cognitive standpoint with, you know, managing stress with nutritious eating, with exercise, like the things that we know. Yeah. So for, for me, longevity looks like controlling what i can on that standpoint knowing my genetics are what they are Mm -hmm. Um, but can i like mostly control what i can from that standpoint so i'm 80 percent of the time i'm gonna eat healthy i'm gonna manage stress i'm gonna limit alcohol i'm gonna but i'm you know for me though it's like how can i do those things and still enjoy life Mm -hmm. right and for so so longevity similar to you is like can i still do the things that i want to do do the things that i need to do at the level that I want to do it at 
right? You know, managing those expectations. So can I still play tennis? Can I still go for a hike without training at all? Or like, like, and when I say hike, I mean like a long walk <laughs> without, without training at all. And, you know, not feel like I'm going to pass out, right. you know, can I, can I still, you know, go on a trip and, and see my friends and have a good time and come back and get right back into my training? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Can I still enjoy the life that I have, right? And so that, that's kind of the, the, the biggest thing for me. And it's not even like, it's not even like health related. Mm -hmm. It's more like a psychological thing. It kind of is, right? I think, I think that the, that's the, the beauty of, of looking at this word of longevity, right? There's, mm. there's a, this whole sphere of health, right? Yeah. And, and I think we, we as the people and, you know, that are consuming information right now, we understand that we should probably work out. We should probably eat better. We should probably sleep, you know, and I think those pieces will now fall into the, the goals of what does longevity mean to you? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you want to play tennis a little longer, then, okay. Your sleep will now directly correlate to that. Right. Yeah, your, your for sure. nutrition will now um, give you the ability to, to push that performance on the, on the court. Um, so no, it, it, actually, I want to do this as a, as a whole topic in itself, just because I think everybody should start to think about that, right? Longevity, health. Um, there's so many thoughts in my head right now, and <laughs> I want to want to spit them out. But uh, yeah, that's a let's, let's let's put a bookmark on that one. I put, think put, put a bookmark on that one. I'm curious to hear what people um, you know think about when when we're saying and talking about longevity and yeah. I think it'd be a good way for us to kind of cater that conversation. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. thousand percent. Uh, <laughs> next one for my boy, my absolute dog in San Diego. Uh, Gene asked that coach Gene, what is the hardest thing you ever trained for and why? Mm -hmm. Mine was, um, I had an answer. I, I put half dome. That, mm -hmm. Like that's what came to my, came to mind like hiking half known but like i don't even think i trained for that <laughs> i should have that's the problem <laughs> uh i think it was more of like the hardest thing i've done in a while was was yeah. hike half dome um so i used to compete um for taekwondo when i was uh like a teenager for a f for a few years <laughs> i think training during that time was different right if you if you're in martial arts the 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 culture is just different. It's to where there's a certain aspect of, of mental toughness that you need to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, that's not as emphasized as, you know, going to a strength class. I mean, there is in some cases, but you know, the mental portion of, or the mental aspect of, of training was something that like I had to get over. Like when I was 13 years old, they had me, um, smash a brick with my wrist i'm like bro what why bro, chill out <laughs> for what for who i'm just trying to kick somebody in the head right there you know so they're doing the most of that one they're doing they don't way too much of that one yeah. um <laughs> they did the most but anyway i think just that time of of, of me understanding how to grow up as a kid being yeah. a teenager go through that that was that was a pretty challenging time so what about you what's uh damn what's okay. something you i think got? um you mind short not that exciting you said it was exciting i don't think it's exciting uh <laughs> training for it was either i think it was a 20 i'm trying to think when i did my best probably the 2020 crossfit open which happened in i think january february 2020 if not, it was a 2019 open. I can't remember mm. when the, when the season. They keep changing the the, the CrossFit Games season, um, but for sure it was that. And that was just kind of like the most effort focused attention that I put into my training, my recovery. So like, and at that time, thinking about like what was going on in my life, I was you know working full time for Exos in North Carolina in in person. Um, I was coaching CrossFit on the side. I was finishing my master's degree. Um, so I had a lot of things going on in my personal life at that time. Um, so it, it made training harder or, or, you know, not, not harder, but it made the time I had to train 
you know, severely less than it would have been otherwise. So had to put a lot of focus into it, had to make a lot of sacrifices to do it. Uh, I don't remember where, where exactly I placed in the world in the region, but I think it was my, my highest placing and like, you know, performed well, you know, co- performed well compared to what I was capable of. So I think like, and the open, I think at that time was a five week competition. So every Friday they released a workout and you had to do the workout by or every Thursday they really released the workout and you had to complete the workout by Monday and submit your score. So like for that one, it was like a long competition. Um, and as far as like rationale goes, I, I, uh, I don't know, like they're trying to look back. I don't know if I have a really deep reason other than like, I was a part of a, a kick-ass gym community at that time. And it was fun. Like it was just fun to push myself and see what I was capable of. So mm-hmm. yeah, either the 2019 or 2020 cross it open. That was, that was, that was your form of play, right? Not a doubt. That was, that was business. <laughs> Trying to toss your bone over there. Uh, <laughs> just get I love CrossFit. Get it away from, I get love it away CrossFit. From. I think I think just whenever you say um, whenever we talk about CrossFit, it's just a, it's a, for some reason it excites me in a lot of ways. So we'll have to. Have, That's why I thought we'll it was have exciting. to have a, 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 a the full blown convo on that, John. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. Um, one last one we got right that we'll, we'll we got hey, from the yeah. IG uh, IGQ. One more from God, a legend in the field, legend. Mr. Victor Hall, Coach Victor. Shout out, shout out Victor. Uh, if you're going to come on the show, just give us a shout. <laughs> come on the show. Yeah, it's, it's open. It's an open, open invite for you. But uh, how do you keep a Mamba mentality for your career? Man, I love this question. Um, so this is the most for- JT. This is the most JT question that has ever been asked. <laughs> Thank you for asking that, um, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, and I thought it was I was going to have a nice, simple answer to it, too. So I, this might be another episode in itself. But I think ultimately it comes down to um, focusing on what you want to focus on, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, being the best at what you want to be the best in. I think those are things that come to mind when, you know, people throw around the word, Mom mentality might mean different um, reasons for people, but for me, it's, it's understanding like, okay, what do I care about? And let me care about that a little bit more. Actually, mm-hmm. let me care about it a lot more. And the things that I don't care about, let me not care about it as much or not at all. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think just locking in the focus, uh, that's what I took a lot from, from Kobe. There's a lot of stories out there where crazy stories, which are just fun to hear if you ever go on YouTube. Yeah. You know, he goes, it's, to the gym you know early 4 a.m and he doesn't leave till 4 p.m and those kind of things i tried to do a lot of that stuff in college back then right so it was really more just learning how to take that mentality into the things that you care about the things that you're passionate about how do you focus on the detail focus on uh you know being better at what you want to be better at so yeah i yeah. i love that Love that. Yeah. I think for, for me, it, it's, it's like this, this relentless attitude, right? So you talk about like, it doesn't have to be sport. It can be anything that you, that you want to achieve or that you want to be the best at. And when I think about it, it's, it's that like true relentless pursuit of excellence in something, right? So can I like aggressively attack my weaknesses and bring them up? Mm-hmm. Can I make my strengths even stronger? Right in relation to something I want to do. So, you know, from a career standpoint, when I think about, when I think about what I've, you know, had the good fortune to do in my career, it's been like a relentless pursuit of knowledge. Mm. And that's kind of been like my thing. And my, my mantra is I'm always going to take, attack every situation. Like I don't know the most, I don't know enough. And I'm always going to try to learn more knowing that I'll never know anything. But yeah. that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to learn as much as I possibly can about a given topic in the field. So, yeah, when mm-hmm. I think about taking that same mindset of, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work so much harder and smarter than everyone else around me in the gym for basketball, then I'm going to take that same mindset and apply right. it to, to the things that I do now. Right. Yeah. No, I like that. I think you gave more of a... A Kobe answer than than any than myself. That's that Philly um, connection, bro. That's that Philly connection. Mm-hmm. It's different. Yeah, I just love different. that. I think just to 
to close that out, a, one of the topics we talked about in another episode of uh, our coaching philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. And something I took from Kobe specifically was, um, and Bruce Lee was a coach, I, uh, a quote I actually heard yesterday that ties in well with what Kobe kind of did towards the end of his career was uh, having a, the best style is having no style. Mm. Right. Is it, what I, what I took from them was <clears throat> learning from the best and what of the best can you take to bring to yourself, right? Understanding what's good, apply it to what you think is necessary. Um, so I think Kobe did that, you know, towards the end of his career, learned from, you know, the, the best actors, cause that's kind of what he was going towards was uh, storytelling, right? How do you learn from the best storytellers? How do you yeah. do all that? So I think taking it back to the career as a coach, I don't know a lot about, you know, uh, a lot of things, but vertical jump, for example, yeah. Uh, how do I learn from the people who know a lot about that and just understanding that you don't really have a style because your style is everybody's style. So mm-hmm. I think that's, that's what I would consider as, as the mom mentality for me right now. Dang. well said sir well said well damn uh a lot a lot to unpack here i think this is a i mean at least for me i don't know about everybody else listening but i had an incredible time <laughs> with this one a, a whole lot of fun uh again like if you if you want to send some smoke our way some questions some pushback some agreement whatever uh hit us up on instagram hit the show up on instagram we want to hear from y'all uh, we want to hear y'all's y'all's responses to this. So, with that in mind, JT, where can people find you? Uh, CoachJT.mp3 only on the IG. I don't think I'm on any other platform. If I am, then it's 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 not me. So look for the <laughs> look, look for, for the real, the real the one real there. JT. Uh, you can find me on IG as well at Nashville. Uh, probably on Twitter too, but don't go on Twitter. Don't go to my old Twitter. Yeah, please don't. don't please don't find please me on don't. Twitter. <laughs> Never mind. And you can find you can find the show at Push and Performance. That's pushing no G performance. Uh, and as always, if you love the show, show love how you supposed to. Uh, leave a five star rating and a review wherever you get your podcast. Jump on YouTube. Leave a like. Leave a subscription. Leave us a comment. You can find us on YouTube at Pushing Performance. That's pushing no G. Uh, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. It was an absolute blast for us. So hopefully y'all got some nuggets out of it, but that's all we got for you today. So we will catch you all next time. Be smooth. See ya.